Hello and welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event tonight. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check back the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com Ohio. That's strivescan.com Ohio. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Bowling Green State University. Hi everyone, good evening, thanks for joining. My name is Allie Tracy and I have the privilege of serving as Assistant Director of Admissions at Bowling Green State University. So without further ado, who is Bowling Green State University or BGSU? Um, we are your mid-sized tier one public university here in the state of Ohio, located Northwest Ohio, just about 30 minutes south of Toledo. Um, BG is kind of known for being that um, middle of the middle of the mark school. So not too big, not too small, just right. So if you're looking for your Goldilocks story, we've got it for you here. So excited um, to show you what that means. Now we're known for a lot of different things. Um, most people know that BGSU was founded as uh, an education school. So we're the top teacher provider in the state of Ohio. We have over 300 uh, school districts that come to recruit our teachers, both in the state and out of the state. But there are a lot of exciting new programs. So you're obviously seeing a clip here from our new resort and attraction management partnership with Cedar Fairs. Uh, we've got a brand new school of nursing right on our campus with labs that students can interact with um, those state of the art uh, dummies and be able to work on their own um, in their nursing practice. We've got our own forensics lab on campus uh, run by the um, Ohio State Attorney General's office, which is cool. We have a new systems engineering program and, and many other programs that we can talk about. So just a few that I wanted to highlight uh, that you might not be as familiar with when you think of BGSU, but we've got over 200 different majors. So whatever it is you're looking for, we've got it here at BG in some way, shape or form. That's kind of why I like it because as I mentioned, you get the perks of a lot large scale university, but you're in a really small home knit tight community. So Bowling Green is your quintessential college town. Um, regardless of what you're looking for, you're going to find it at BG. Uh, I think it's really special that we do have uh, opportunities as early as your freshman year when it comes to undergraduate research. Maybe there's something specific that's always been on your heart or something you've been passionate about. Um, you have the opportunity to partner with faculty from day one who are also uh, and have been in that field for some time. So I think that's really cool to get hands-on experience. We obviously embrace diversity and, and belonging. Our tagline is belong, stand out, go far. And we really think uh, that that represents BGSU. We are a huge community of care. We just want to see each other be our best versions of ourselves. So um, we also have great ways to elevate your experience at BG, like joining our honors college where you get small classes. Sizes. Our average class sizes are under 24 students. So within the Honors College and our average class size in general at BG is 24. So we've got 20,000 students, but your average class size you'll find is about 24, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, when it comes to applying to Bowling Green, it's actually really exciting. We have decided to waive the application fee from now through October 31st. So a little Halloween treat for you all, uh, considering next fall, you can submit your application now um, for fall of 22 for free, whether you're using the Common App or our Bowling Green application, um, that applies. We are test optional for fall 22. So this means you can choose on the application if you would like us to consider your test scores or if you would not like us to consider your test scores for admission and for scholarship purposes. Um, when it comes to scholarships, that's a big topic right now as the FAFSA opened up back on October 1. This tells us what you can qualify for in grants, free money, scholarships, and then loans, which is what you pay back. 
Um, but it's, it is important to know that Bowling Green does offer some automatic scholarships, um, which means that you will receive those upon your admission. So that's why uh, we ask you to thoroughly share with us on your application what you've done. Uh, so that way we can do a, a holistic review on what you can qualify for. And that scholarship offer is then good for the next three years following. So it's good for your four years at BG. We also do a tuition guarantee program, meaning the rate at which your tuition is when you begin with us will be that way for the next four years years. But scholarship deadlines, you have to apply to BG by January 15th. But we say, apply now, get admitted now, we're rolling admission, and that way you can start finding some of those larger scholarships that may have earlier deadlines. Um, you're going to find lots of different things here, and it's so hard to get all the information out to you right now. So I would heavily recommend checking our online offerings. So we do have a virtual page with lots of info sessions on specific majors. Maybe you're curious about living on campus and want to see our housing, financial aid and scholarship sessions. So we have all of those going on online, but we also have in-person visits uh, daily, Monday through Friday, and some Saturday visits. Um, Saturday, October 30th, we're actually having our, our fall preview day, which is a great chance to come explore campus, get a tour in, see everything all at once. Uh, and it's really the best bang for your buck. If there's a day to come to BGSU to see us uh, in the fall with the changing of the leaves and our orange brown, it is going to be fall preview day. So definitely recommend uh, getting to campus, checking us out. And I think just lastly, the, the thing that makes BGSU different is our approach that we call life design. And this is really special because at Bowling Green, yes, we want to get you out of the door in four years. Yes, we want to get you a great degree. And it would be lovely if you had a 4.0. But really what, what it comes down to is making sure that at the end of your college career, you're happy. So we design your life with you, not just designing your four-year career at Bowling Green, we're thinking beyond. So come with your bucket list, come with all the things you wanna achieve, uh, but mostly know that you've got a lot of support here to make sure that when you leave Bowling Green's doors, uh, you're gonna live that, that happy, satisfied life uh, and feel really good with the time that you had at, at BG. Thank you all for your time and attention. Know that you each have a personal admissions counselor and you can find them at bgsu.edu slash team. Thanks. Thank you so much. And a reminder to our participants that you can use that Q&A function at any time to ask questions of our schools here tonight. Up next is Heidelberg University. Hi, everybody. My name is Grace Richardson, and I'm an admission counselor at Heidelberg University and also a recent alumni. Heidelberg is a small private liberal arts institution located in Tippin, Ohio, which is in Northwest Ohio. Um, we have a campus population of around 1,100 students, 13 to 1 student faculty ratio, an average class size of 17. So you get connection with those faculty members, um, those personalized relationships, and really just a personalized education at Heidelberg University. Um, other big things, if you're interested in like med school, uh, we do have 84% acceptance rate in the med school. And then our students at Heidelberg are also very involved on campus through extracurriculars and student organizations. Um, there are over 70 plus student organizations and those continue to grow as our students have the flexibility to add clubs based on their interests. We are a liberal arts institution, which that just means by the time you graduate Heidelberg within those four years, you'll graduate with a minimum of 120 credit hours. But oftentimes we'll see our students going above and beyond that as they individualize those educations and add minors, two minors, or maybe even a double major. Here is a list of our programs, but just to highlight some of our biggest majors at Heidelberg include health science, business, um, biochemistry, and then education. Some of our biggest opportunities for our students is that we do have test optional admission um, and scholarship awarding. So we'll get to that on the later side about affordability. Um, we also have a tuition guarantee. So that means that tuition rate that you enroll at Heidelberg will stay static throughout your four years at Heidelberg. You won't see any increase. We also have a four year graduation guarantee. Um, so that just means we align with your goal of getting in and out with your undergrad bachelor's degree within that four year time frame. Also another program special to Heidelberg is our career ready program, um, HYPE. So that's grant funded. It focuses on those six skills listed on that slide. 
Um, within this program, we take six days out of the year, we bring in keynote speakers and break our students out into sessions that'll better benefit them, make them more well-rounded individuals and focus on building skills within those six areas. And then we also offer a plus one advantage MBA tuition free scholarship program at Heidelberg. So what that means is any major, not just limited to business majors, if you graduate from Heidelberg within that four years, get a 3.0 or higher, you can come back and get your MBA tuition free within a two year time frame. And then for affordability, um, you can take attention to our costs um, and see the total direct costs, but out-of-pocket costs um, traditionally for Heidelberg is actually very comparable to some of those state schools. So just because we're a private institution, um, that's not necessarily what you're paying for. Um, you're paying average costs comparable to some public institutions listed in that chart that you can see. Um, and then we do offer scholarships and grants. So we have three different academic scholarships you can come in at. Those start at a range of around a 3.0 and then work their way up upon application review. And then we also have those grants that you see and about 97% of our students at Heidelberg do receive some form of financial assistance and aid. And if you want to apply to Heidelberg, um, it is a free application. So no application fee, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, we're completely test optional, so we don't need those test scores. All we need is that completed application, an essay, and then your transcripts. And we're also available on the Common App or through our website at heidelberg.edu. Um, if you wanna go ahead and overachieve, you can also send in some letters and recommendation, or if you're really happy with your test scores, you can also send those to us too, um, for us to take into consideration when we're reviewing those applications. And then this is our office's information, email, um, and our contact for if you need to set up a phone call, um, come visit us. We have certain visit days and then individual visits that run throughout the week um, that you can come see us at. And then after I'm done with this presentation, I'll put a link in the chat if you want more information, just fill out that form. Um, but other than that, I am finished with my presentation, but make sure to stop and see us at Heidelberg University. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Kent State University. Okay, guys, just trying to get my screen to share. All righty, can everybody see that? Um, it hasn't pulled up yet. Uh-oh, let me see here. I will not lie to you guys, I've been having technical difficulties with my computer. All right, guys, let me see here. How's that? There you go, all good. All righty, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. I'm Kelly Rafferty, not Brian Crescenzo from Kent State University. I'm a senior admissions counselor and a Kent State alum, and I wanna thank you for spending some time with us this evening. I'm gonna try and give you all the good things you need to know about Kent State in a very brief time, so bear with me. Alrighty, so when we talk about Kent State and who attends, we have an eight campus network, we have seven regional campuses located through Northeast Ohio, and then of course our Kent campus, which is located in Kent, Ohio, uh, that is the home, home campus, but 22,000 students, uh, the undergraduate level attend the Kent campus, and about 4,200 of those are freshmen. So we are like Bowling Green, a mid-sized university. Um, it is the three little bears type thing, Goldilocks. Not too big, not too small, depending on what you're looking for. And we do get students from all 50 states. I'm actually coming to you live from Northern Virginia right now. Um, over 100 foreign countries. So you will find a lot of different people on our campus at any given time. So it's a great diverse atmosphere to be in, great college town to, to be in. Um, if you wanna be close to big cities like Cleveland, like Pittsburgh, like Columbus, you're anywhere from an hour to two hours away from those cities. 
We do talk about the university, we talk about our colleges and schools, and we actually have over 350 majors and programs. Some of you might be familiar with them already, you might be shopping around, you might know that we have a professional pilot program, we have our own airport with over 30 planes in our fleet, we have a world renowned architecture school along with interior design and construction management involved. If you're looking for a fashion school, Kent State is a top 10 fashion school in the country, along with having an amazing opportunity to study abroad in Florence and a fantastic design studio in the heart of the garment district in New York. In addition, you have fine and performing arts. If you're looking for things like your pre-med programs or your pre-law programs, I think we are a great opportunity, especially because of the region we're located in. You know, if you know anything about the, the Northeast Ohio area, you know that medicine is basically king and our students get the opportunity to go to places like the Cleveland Clinic and university hospitals to do things like internships and shadowing. Business administration, of course, is very popular. If you're interested in journalism, we do a fantastic job of educating future journalists, whether it's print, media, um, it's broadcast media, whatever you're looking for. We also have a fantastic education college. Um, we do send out teachers. That's what our foundation was on, just like Bowling Greens. We were the Kent Normal School founded in 1910. So we educate the future teachers of tomorrow. Nursing is another fantastic program at Kent State. And we actually have a fun little factoid about our program. 40% of your nurses in the greater Cleveland Akron area are Kent State grads. And again, I think that has a lot to do with the region and the fact that medicine is such a popular career choice in our area. We have a 90 to a 98% pass rate on our NCLEX. So that means when you leave us, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna take that NCLEX and most of our students are passing it on the first try. We can't get students to grad, excuse me, graduate fast enough out of our nursing school to get them into um, hospitals, into doctor's offices. College of Public Health is another interesting um, college. We all know those two words. We've heard them probably for the past two years a little too much, but we do have a fantastic College of Public Health where you can learn about things like epidemiology. If you're undecided on what you want to do, I want to tell you Kent State doesn't look at you as undecided. We look at you as exploratory. So please know the university colleges for our students who aren't quite sure what they want to do yet, but they don't want to commit to a major because they're unsure. And then we do have an honors college. It's one of the oldest in the country. Uh, it is a 3.7 or better GPA for admissions purposes. And this is where I'd like to preface that Kent State is also test optional for fall of 2022 and beyond. Um, when we talk about the university, we are a residential campus. We are a safe campus environment. We have a full police department both on our campus and a city police department. Uh, everything's key carded so please don't worry about people being able to come into your private spaces. It is all very, very secure. Um, it's like three swipes before you can get anywhere. If you live outside a 50 mile radius of the university, please know you will have to live on campus the first two years, but housing here is fantastic. You have heating, you have air conditioning, you have cable TV, you have your furniture that comes with it, your refrigerator, your microwave company, you're traditionally living two people to a room bathroom down the hall or what they call the semi-private bath option. So please know it's not a locker room feel anymore that you don't necessarily have to share with 30 people. You actually have a small tiny bathroom that's yours to use. But some of our halls like Centennial Court and Stouffer Johnson Halls, which are the honors halls, they have their own bathrooms. We have living learning communities or living learning programs that are based on your majors or based on your interests. So you can always look into those. We're co-ed by floor wing, but not by room. However, we do offer gender inclusive housing at Corb Hall, and you will not starve on campus, I promise you. There are plenty of opportunities to eat, whether you're vegan or vegetarian. I want you to know that we take care of you. We've actually been voted a top 10 vegan vegetarian school by PETA. Um, we're gluten-free friendly. You've got your swipe plan where basically you can swipe into Eastway or into the Design Innovation Hub and eat to your heart's content. And then you also have what we call the declining balance option, which means you get a certain amount of declining balance and you can use it at our hub where we've got an Einstein bakery, a sushi restaurant. You can use it at the two Starbucks located on campus also. And know that because Kent State is very much a college town, there are great restaurants all around, not just your chain restaurants, but restaurants in downtown Kent. So I promise you, you definitely won't starve on campus or off campus for that matter. We want you to know there's over 400 student organizations like other big universities. You can get as involved as you like. You can get involved in things like sorority or fraternity life. Greek life is popular, but not over encompassing at the university. You can go ahead and get involved in things that are personal to you, things that are professional to you, and know there's over a thousand special events at any given time on campus. 
Just to give you the quick rundown on applying, please apply. We're on the common application. We also have our own application, choose one. Submit those official high school transcripts. There is a $50 test, or I'm sorry, $50 application fee. We do accept fee waivers. Please work with your school counselors. And as I mentioned, please know that we are test optional for the foreseeable future. We're rolling admission, so don't worry about early action or early early action or early decision dates. And just to give you an idea of cost, you're looking at a total cost of tuition room and board at 24,335. Remember, these are before any type of scholarship, before any type of financial aid. Please have an application on file by February 1 so you can be considered for merit-based scholarship consideration to bring that number down. And also know we are also on the Ohio tuition guarantee, which means your costs are locked in. Get that financial aid in, FAFSA is available. If you've never done one before, take a look at opportunities on the websites, take a look at your schools. If they're offering financial aid workshops, they're a wealth of knowledge and we encourage all students to complete their FAFSA. Um, it's not hard, it's just a little bit of a tedious form, but definitely get that in. And feel free to check out our social media sites. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. And also please come see us. We are hosting our preview days and our daily campus tour. So thank you guys. That's my big spiel. I'm Kelly Rafferty and I'm glad that you were able to attend this and I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you so much. And remember you can ask your questions of our schools with that Q and A function on your screen. Up next, we have Lawrence Technological University. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I am Sean McNiff. I'm an admissions counselor here at Lawrence Technological University. Uh, so just a brief background of who we are. We're located in Southfield, Michigan. Uh, that's in the Metro Detroit area. Uh, so a brief background. So we were founded by George and Russell Lawrence back in 1932, and we were founded as Lawrence Institute of Technology. We were actually founded in the building that was adjacent to the Model T assembly plant. You can see it kind of circled right there. Uh, and the idea was for people that were working on the line to further their education at night so they can take that college and reapply it back to the car, essentially. Uh, to this day, we still use that kind of idea of theory and practice. If this wants to go ahead, there we go. So this idea of what we call theory and practice. So that's kind of taking what you're learning in the classroom and putting it into real world situations. There are a lot of ways for you to do that here at Lawrence Tech. Uh, some of those would be your senior and quest projects. Additionally, we have team projects like our Blue Devil Motorsports. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, additionally, you can use a lot of labs and studios. So there's going to be a lot of hands on work, essentially. Uh, and that's going to be at the undergraduate level. A lot of the labs and studios that you see on our campus aren't just going to be used at the graduate level. You're going to be using those from day one because all of our programs are going to be direct entry. So us by the numbers, we are a smaller uh, private university. We've got about 3000 total students, 2000 of which are undergraduate and 1000 which are graduate. Uh, additionally, we have 43 states as well as 48 countries represented, and we have an alumni network worldwide of 30,000 plus as well. The learning environment, uh, you're going to be admitted directly into your major, as I previously stated, and you're going to start taking those courses from day one. That's really important because you can actually start uh, being ready for internships and co-ops really early on. There are some students that can leave with like two, three, four years of internship experience. Additionally, the courses themselves, they're going to be taught by faculty only, so you're not going to have like a student teacher or a teaching assistant. And we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So you build really good one-on-one -on -one personalized attention with your professors. That's how a lot of our students do end up finding jobs, co-ops and internships. Additionally, we do have an honors program, service learning as well as study abroad and service abroad as well. Uh, this slide is kind of just designed to show you that when we say small class sizes, we mean small class sizes. On average, it's gonna be about 15 to 20 students. Uh, you're not gonna be in a giant lecture hall. Everything's gonna be in kind of more of a classroom based environment. Uh, additionally, when you come to Lawrence Tech, you're going to be given a laptop. The laptop comes pre-downloaded with top-line software. They reach out to businesses in the surrounding area to see what they're using. That way, when you're going to jobs, co-ops, and internships, you have a good foundational knowledge of that software that they're using. Uh, and it is also going to be specific to what major you're looking to go into, so it's specialized software. So, for example, the College of Architecture and Design computer is going to be different than, say, Arts and Sciences. Same thing with Arts and Sciences to Business and IT, and then Business and IT to Engineering. Uh, with the College of Architecture and Design, uh, you're going to have your uh, AutoCAD architecture, Adobe CCE, After Effects, Google SketchUp Pro. Arts and Sciences, you're going to have your After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Uh, with Business and IT, you'll have your Simulate, MiniTab, and PsychoPy. Uh, and Engineering, you're going to have your AutoCAD, CATIA, Maple, MathCAD, so on and so forth. So pretty much they've reached out to businesses in the surrounding area. 
Uh, additionally, we also have a help desk that will be there. Say something does happen to this laptop, they're going to be there to fix it for you. If they can't fix it for you, they're going to swap it out for you. So there's never going to be a moment where you're without the computer, essentially. Moving on to our programs. So we have four colleges. Um, you kind of saw them before, architecture and design, arts and sciences, business and IT, as well as engineering. Within the College of Architecture and Design, we have a ton of different programs. Our architecture program is actually the largest in the state, and over half the licensed architects in the state graduated from Lawrence Tech as well. So uh, you can see those two stars that indicates a direct entry master's program. So that architecture program is direct entry. You can actually graduate with a bachelor's or, and a master's degree in five years. That's important to become a fully licensed architect. You need a master's degree. So that five-year track is really uh, helpful. We have a ton of different designs that are available, such as game, graphic, industrial, interior, and transportation. Moving over to the College of Arts and Sciences, we have a wide variety of majors in fields like physics, chemistry, molecular and cell biology, all the way to things like mathematical sciences, media communication, and psychology. Uh, we also do have computer science. You can see those two stars, once again, indicating a direct entry master's program. So in five years, you graduate with both a bachelor's and master's degree in that. Uh, there are various concentrations within computer science. Uh, some that come off the top of my head is cybersecurity, game software development, scientific software development, software engineering. So there are a lot of different ways for you to study that. Uh, we do also have a nursing program that's available. They do their pra practice partnerships in 11 different locations through Ascension Health. And then we do also have pre-professional programs available. So if you are interested in going to any sort of dental law or medical school, we do have pre-dental, pre-law and pre-medical. Uh, moving on to the College of Business and IT, uh, you can see that we have a ton of majors within business administration. Uh, they have accounting, finance, general business, IT, and marketing, but we do also have bachelor programs in data analytics as well. Uh, they, uh, the College of Business and IT is actually an AACSB accredited program, uh, so it's actually a really stringent accreditation that only 6% of business schools have actually achieved. Moving on to the College of Engineering. Uh, so we were actually founded as a College of Engineering back in 1932, so we've been at the forefront leading the education of engineers for over, or for over 80 years at this point. Uh, you can see we have a long list of engineering that are available. Uh, we've got things like mechanical, civil, robotics, but we do have more exotic ones that are available, like audio engineering technology, construction engineering technology, and management. So there are a lot of different ways for you to study engineering here as well. Uh, we do have a ton of master's programs and two doctoral programs in civil and mechanical engineering too. Moving on to the fun stuff, which is the admissions process. Uh, the admissions process is super simple. All that you'll need to do is you'll submit your application through our website. We'll need you to submit your official high school transcripts and we are gonna be test optional. So if you uh, have taken the SAT or ACT, we really do recommend that you do submit that. Um, additionally, your next steps once you are admitted, what you're gonna to wanna to do is submit your enrollment deposit that will secure your scholarship and allow you to apply for university housing. Uh, so that's pretty much all the time that I have today. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is give you this slide. This is how you can come and visit our campus. It's something that's really important is making sure that you visit any and all colleges that you are looking to go into. So you can do so at ltu.edu backslash visit. I'd like to thank you all for your time and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Up next, we have Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Thank you so much. I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, my name is Kate Bellow. I'm one of the counselors in the admissions office at uh, WPI. So excited to be here with you today. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, you look good. Great. Okay, thank you so much. So Worcester Polytechnic Institute, we are located in the heart of New England in Worcester, Massachusetts. And similar to Lawrence, we are um, a STEM-focused institution whose motto is actually theory and practice. And um, so we are a school where our students have a very flexible curriculum. We were founded in 1865, so we're the third oldest polytechnic institute in the country. Um, with over 50 different majors that students can choose from. And I would say in general terms, about 60% of our students are gonna be focusing on something within engineering. We have 11 different majors that you can choose from. We also have students who are studying the life sciences. So maybe they're thinking about pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental. So all of those chemistry, bio, biochem, physics, math, those types of classes they'd be able to take we offer computer science, we offer interactive media and game development. 
Business is also a very popular minor on campus, but it's also a major for our students. And then last but not least, we also have um, a humanities and arts opportunities for our students. So we're a STEM school, um, but a great fit for students who also want to explore their passions within the humanities. Um, and again, keeping on that very flexible curriculum, um, we offer opportunities for our students to double major. They can pick up minors along the way, and we have some advanced programs where students can also complete their bachelor's and their master's in five years. We have uh, about 4,700 undergraduate students, so we are a medium-sized school, and we also have about 2,500 hundred additional folks on campus that are doing master's or PhD level work. So if you're someone who's thinking about um, research, that's absolutely something you'd be able to do in that first year. We're a very diverse, very inclusive community. Um, we have students who are coming to study from all over the country, all over the world, all different types of backgrounds, and um, very much that global perspective is felt on our campus. Let's see. We go. So Worcester, I wanted to talk a little bit about Worcester. Um, I noted that we're centrally located. Worcester, if you didn't know it, is actually the second largest city in New England, and it's home to about 34,000 college students. So we have a fantastic consortium where students can take classes at one of the other institutions in the area. We share social calendars. The city caters to the college student population. Um, this is a really nice picture of Worcester um, and WPI were located in a quieter part of the city. So we have about 95 acres that our students can spread out on, um, but still take advantage of all that a city, a city college has to offer. So I talked earlier about our motto also being theory and practice. And if there's a takeaway from tonight at WPI, it's that we have a project-based curriculum. So Projects are built into all four years at WPI, but there are four projects that you would complete for credit during your time on campus. Um, the first, the Great Problem Seminar is optional. That's completed in the first year where you're looking at a large scale global issue. We then ask students, typically in that sophomore or junior year, to complete a humanities and arts project. You get to dive into classes with the humanities that you enjoy the most. Um, and then in your junior and senior year, you're completing what we call the IQP and the MQP. Um, and these are projects that you actually will complete in teams. Um, and you will actually be completing these projects with a project sponsor. And your project sponsor is not someone necessarily at WPI. Your project sponsor could be somebody located all over the country, all over the world. And you can see here on this particular slide, all of those red dots um, are project centers. So our students will travel in teams with other WPI students and complete projects with their project sponsors outside the agencies, governments, businesses. So it's really almost like an internship that you're doing for credit. And every student at WPI gets a global scholarship that they can use towards having that global abroad experience. And employers really love this about WPI students. It's why they come and hire our students for internships during the summer, for co-op experiences. Um, our average starting salary is one of the highest in the country um, because our students have this project-based collaboration experience. They know how to problem solve. Um, and we have recruiters who are coming to campus all the time to meet with WPI students about internships, co-op experiences, and then of course that job. Um, that career path after you graduate from WPI. So um, I wanted to share um, that a couple things for this year, um, all of our admissions information is available on our website. We um, had been test optional for the last decade and we're now going to be piloting being test blind at WPI um, for the next five to eight years. So you do not need to send us your test scores. We do not have an application fee. We have very flexible programs in terms of when students can actually apply and we are on the common application. So, um, please definitely check out our website, check out our virtual and in-person visit options, and um, I'm happy to share my contact information in the chat as well, um, and don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime. And thanks so much. Thank you. And reminder participants that you can use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here. We still have time left tonight. Up next, we have Beloit College. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for hanging out for uh, uh, 40, 40 minutes or so with us. Um, so I'm uh, representing the small liberal arts college world uh, tonight. 
Um, Beloit College is located out in Beloit, Wisconsin. Um, so depending on where you are in Ohio, probably just about a, a six to seven hour drive and probably about an hour and a half flight or so. Uh, so my name is Liam Daly. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Beloit. Uh, and one of the states that I work with is Ohio. So if you were to apply to Beloit, um, I would get to know you and read your application and hopefully meet you for an interview, all that good stuff. So as I mentioned, we are in the city of Beloit. Uh, Beloit is in southern Wisconsin. So we're about 45 minutes south of Madison, Wisconsin. We're about an hour and 20 minutes west of Chicago. So if you're to fly to Beloit, you'd likely fly to O'Hare just outside of Chicago. And then you take about an uh, hour and a half bus ride to our campus. Uh, Beloit, the city, is home to about 40,000 people. We have an international film festival and an award-winning farmer's market. We've got a minor league baseball team, a ton of really good food, a great sushi place, uh, some tacos, things like that. Uh, and probably the most important thing is that downtown Beloit is right next to campus. So it's just about five minutes from campus to get downtown. You definitely don't need a car. Uh, we've got a really close relationship with the city. A couple of our academic buildings are located downtown. And we have about 200 uh, local businesses that we partner with for uh, internships, uh, summer jobs, and things like that. The college itself is home to about 1,200 students. Uh, come from all over the world. They come from different geographic, ethnic, religious, uh, educational, socioeconomic backgrounds. And what uh, we try to do is, is help those students uh, form one respectful and cohesive community. I think uh, one of the best parts about going to college is that you get to meet people from all over the world and you get to uh, get to know them and learn from them and uh, argue with them a little bit. And one of the most important things you can learn in college is how to argue with other people uh, respectfully, right? And, and um, you know, sort of maintain um, still treating them with, with respect. So we work on that. Uh, in terms of academics, we offer a forward-looking and a fle flexible liberal arts curriculum. So we encourage our students to engage with real world problems in a hands-on way in small classes. So an example of that would be our new data science and data analytics major, uh, which certainly puts skills that are employers, uh, that employers are looking for um, to the forefront, but we do that in a liberal arts context. So what that means is we expect you to master the art of data analysis. Um, we also expect you to do a double major in something like political science or sociology or education. So you understand um, the human consequences of the research that you're doing and you understand the impact of that data. Uh, about a third of our students double major um, and the majority combine a major and a minor. Uh, sometimes that's in complementary programs like international business and uh, Chinese language. Um, sometimes it's in surprising ways like uh, doing all the uh, requirements to do pre-med and go on to med school, but also being a double major in music performance. One of the great things about the, the liberal arts curriculum is that there's the flexibility to do things like that. But we don't expect you to do all that on your own. Our advanced mentoring program matches you with an advisor uh, 72 after, hours after you tell us that you're coming to Beloit. Um, so for those of you who are working on applications right now and are seniors, uh, if you apply to Beloit early decision or early action, you could be meeting your faculty advisor in December of this year. And you could spend the whole year staying in touch with them, chatting with them, um, walking through the best way to finish off senior year, prep for college over the summer and really hit the ground running um, once you get here. That advisor is gonna be the same person who works with you for your first two years on campus. So they're, they'll work with you in small group advising sessions, uh, workshops on college skills, um, and ultimately they'll help you choose your major. I think one of the coolest parts about the program is that um, one of your first semester courses is gonna be taught by that faculty member. So it's gonna be taught by your advisor just to first year students um, but it's going to be on a topic that you choose. So some examples would be uh, alternative histories, uh, race and gender in early America, chemistry and climate change, right? So these, this is not a like welcome to college class. They're real academic classes, but they're taught by your advisors. So you really get to know each other. Um, preparation for your life after college is woven into just about everything that we do. Uh, I'll just give one example, which is our career channels, um, programs that bring together students, faculty, staff, and alums around shared passions. So one example would be the health and healing channel, which brings together, you know, biochem students who are on a pre-med track, but also poli-sci majors who are interested in healthcare policy, uh, coaches who are interested in training in sports medicine. You bring all those people together and put them in the same room to figure out, uh, you know, what sort of opportunities are available for students, both during their time at Beloit and afterwards. Um, so no surprise, our grads are successful. 93% are employed or in graduate school six months out. Um, and the vast majority go on to get a graduate or professional degree at some point. Uh, Beloit students are curious, they're well-rounded, very involved, uh, friendly. 
It's not unusual for a starter on the soccer team to also be an actor, to be part of student government, to have their own radio show. And everyone at Beloit, your advisors, your coaches, your uh, supervisors will understand that that's all an important part of your experience. So uh, even if you're uh, on the football team, if you want to be in a theater production, um, the coaches are going to support making that happen because you should have the opportunity to do that if you want. 30% um, of our students are varsity athletes, a lot more in intramurals, and we have 55 plus clubs that range from a acapella group to a student run market research firm. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved and, and have an impact on this community. Uh, lastly, just talk for one minute about the application process. Hope you're interested in applying. Uh, we have no application fee and there is no hardline minimum GPA or SAT score. We look at applicants holistically as many of the schools tonight do. So we use every element of your application to get to know you and try to imagine the impact you're gonna have on our campus. Um, what we're really looking for is curious and kind students who wanna make a difference in the world. Uh, we meet 96% of financial need on average. So that's pretty close to 100. We're gonna do everything we can to uh, put a Beloit education within reach financially. Uh, and last thing I'll say, we're open for virtual and in-person tours. So we'd love to have, just have you stop by if you can make it out to Wisconsin. If you can't, uh, you can uh, do a tour and meet some students on Zoom. Thanks very much for listening. I'll put my contact info in the chat. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our schools here today. I'll invite everyone um, back on camera now. We have time for some Q&A. So um, let's see, we'll get everyone back here. Our first question for tonight is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So your little nuggets of wisdom for our students here tonight. Um, we'll start with BGSU. Yes, so for the college search process, I would just say have open, honest conversations with your supporters because um, you may be feeling one way and they may be feeling another. So just hash that all out as early as possible because you've got your wish list and they probably have their wish list for you as well. So it's just good to kind of know and set those expectations as early as possible. Um, but loop in the people who care about you because they know you best and they may also be able to really help take the stress and the pressure off of you as you're making uh, a tough decision during a really tough time and a busy season. So um, let the people help you that are here to help. Middleburg University, you're up next. Awesome. I think I would answer just go to as many schools as you can, go visit, keep an open mind, um, even if you just stop at a college fair for a few minutes. Um, if you liked what someone said, going on a visit isn't committing or saying you're going anywhere um, for sure to that university. So be sure to explore all of your options. All right, Kent State. I think the piggyback on what Grace from Heidelberg said is definitely visit. Um, you need to get a sense of this is where you can see yourself. You know, don't go to a, a school because your parents are pushing you. I'm sorry, parents. Um, or you have a significant other that you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with and you want to be with your boyfriend. You need to make sure it's the right step for you. Take your time, learn about the schools and, and talk. And like I said, talk it through, talk it with your supporters, find that, you know, talk about things, the uncomfortable conversations, like things like finance. And is this going to be the right fit for you? But definitely come visit. Yeah, and then kind of going off of that, I think that another thing that I'd really advise is just being in constant contact, in constant contact with the admissions counselors. Uh, we're here to be your best friends for the most part. Uh, and there are a lot of times students don't know their next steps, so they kind of just sit there and don't do anything. And that's the last thing that we want. We want to be here. We want to be your support. So reaching out to us and letting us help you as much as we can as well. And I would say what Grace and Sean, I, I would have said the same thing. So I'm going to add something different, um, which would be just try to um, try to block out the noise of all the different perspectives you're hearing from your friends, maybe, and from family over the holidays. Everyone's got an opinion and you want to just make sure it's the right fit for you. Um, so, oh, so keeping in mind that there's more than one school out there for you um, and, uh, and just try to block out the noise a little bit do what's best for you. I totally agree with uh, everything everyone else has said. Um, a couple of folks have mentioned fit. Um, and one of the things I've been found myself talking to students a lot this fall is, is trying to figure out what kind of educational environment you're actually gonna be successful in. 
Uh, a lot of times we start the college search process with, you know, okay, I want to do biology. And so you look at every college that has biology, which is like almost every college, right? You're right, sort of right back where you begin. Um, so if you can think about a lot of you have never had to choose a school before, you've gone to the same school for 12 years and it's sort of been what it's been. But if you can spend some time thinking about like, what was your favorite class or your most successful project or your favorite teacher, favorite club to be a part of, those things that have had a real impact and try and figure out why those worked and then try and figure out if there's sort of a mirror image of that in college of that style of teaching or those opportunities. Um, Cause you may well change your mind on what you wanna study but you wanna be in a place that, you know is gonna help you be successful. And as everyone has said, is the right fit for you. Perfect, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate all of your perspective um, and advice tonight. And thank you so much to our participants for joining us tonight. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule to sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Ohio. That's strivescan.com slash Ohio. Thank you. Have a great evening.